They've become collateral damage in a fiery underworld war that's spreading across the suburbs. Small business owners feeling the heat from a firebombing campaign. Innocent targets of a crime spree. The last 12 months have averaged a fire a week. <laughs> Melbourne's latest gangland conflict, dubbed the Tobacco Wars. Back up, back up. But it's other small businesses being burnt. We didn't do anything and uh, we have to suffer a lot. It's affected all our families, everyone. Minnie is a tutor in Melbourne's western suburbs. There's no way she can teach students here at Hopper's Crossing after the building went up in flames last month. All the glass was broken and they were, all the smoke were coming out and they were not allowing me to go inside. If you can see the wires and all, it's all hanging. If there's no power, we can't operate. At four o'clock in the morning, a car pulls up to the complex and shadowy figures emerge. One appears to pour petrol from a red jerry can before the building ignites. Police are investigating if a tobacco store downstairs was the intended target, but it escaped the inferno. Half a dozen businesses in the building have had to relocate. Is it scary that that it's can happen? It's very scary. Like, it was good, it was at four o'clock. You can't imagine if when I was teaching and I was with the kids. A few suburbs away in Altona, this tobacco store was completely burnt out after two arson attempts in 24 hours. It's not fair, it's very unfair, but you know, they've lost everything. I'm lucky, I'm still going. Hairdresser Cheryl Johnson wasn't surprised by the arson attack, the flames spreading to the front of her salon, closing it for days. Hopefully it won't be a tobacco store when it reopens because it's completely gutted inside. And I couldn't see the landlord wanting to let it as a tobacco shop, but if it is, uh, what do we do? A month later, another tobacco shop fire spread to another salon, this time in Caulfield in Melbourne's southeast. Anastasia Giacas unable to open. And it's absolutely devastating. This is our house, it's our home, it's everyone's home. Melbourne's tobacco wars are believed to be driven by two organised crime gangs, battling for control of the illicit tobacco trade. Detectives are investigating over 50 fires since March last year. More than a dozen other businesses, including reception centres, restaurants and ice cream stores, have also gone up. Victoria Police is concerned in relation to the potential for somebody to be killed or seriously injured. Superintendent Jason Kelly oversees Victoria Police's Task Force Luna. In the last six months, investigators have raided over 100 tobacco shops and arrested more than 40 people, charging an alleged ringleader. That's 40 people who are currently before the criminal justice system for very serious offences of arson and extortion and firearms related violence. Police believe there are syndicates working across the country, with tobacco shops also targeted in Queensland and WA. But Victoria is the last state where a licence isn't required to open a tobacco store, and there are over a thousand. The government says there's plans to introduce a licensing scheme by the end of the year. Any legislative reform would certainly assist us going forward. The illicit tobacco trade is lucrative. It's reported a shipping container of illegal cigarettes will sell in the millions. It would cost an organised crime group approximately $250,000 to land that in Australia. And with the contents uh, being sold successfully on the streets, they would realise anecdotally a profit of around $5 million. Clint Sims is the Australian Border Force Commander for Trade. He says there's been a major increase in tobacco smuggling and seizures since the fires began. Record levels, particularly over the 22-23 financial year. There's literally billions of cigarettes every year. The majority of illicit tobacco is coming through the ports at Melbourne and Sydney. Some of it is disguised, like this seizure that was hidden in a shipment of stationery. In other containers, there's been no attempt to hide the fact they're filled with only illegal cigarettes. The demand so high, organised crime groups are willing to keep running the risk. 
tax and duty that is applied to tobacco will continue to increase every year, which in itself creates a black market. Organised crime groups will do what they can to try and profit. For those caught up in the firefight, there's no choice but to carry on. It's only for few money or whatever, I don't know. But they should not do this. But they won't win. They never will. Crime does not pay in the end. Yeah, it's tough enough for small business, isn't it? They don't need this. It's scary.